Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. The United States to send fighter jets to the UAE while the Yemen war rages. Amnesty International says Israel is committing the crime of apartheid. Another NDF peace consultant killed in the Philippines. And Peru sees a second cabinet reshuffle under Castillo. The United States has announced that it is sending fighter jets to the United Arab Emirates. Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed on February 1st. The US will dispatch its guided missile destroyer, the USS Cole, and fifth-generation fighter aircraft. The call followed a day after the UAE stated that it had intercepted a missile launched by the Houthis. This was the third such attack by the group in two weeks. The US-backed UAE and Saudi-led coalition retaliated with a days-long campaign of airstrikes. The worst of these was the bombing of a prison in Sada in northern Yemen. At least 91 people were killed and over 200 left injured. The laser-guided bomb used in the attack was manufactured by US weapons giant Raytheon. The Biden administration is now sending arms, a year after declaring an end to support for military operations in Yemen. This included the sale of offensive weapons. However, the US approved a $500 million military contract with Saudi Arabia in October last year. That contract includes a fleet of Apache attack helicopters, Black Hawks and Chinooks. Experts have also said that the Apaches have mostly been deployed along the Yemen border. The UAE has intensified its role in the Saudi-led military offensive as the Houthis make advances towards Marib. Now in its eighth year, the war and accompanying blockades have killed over 400,000 people. Rights group Amnesty International has stated that Israel's system of oppression and domination of Palestinians amounts to apartheid. The organization released a landmark 280-page report on the 1st of February. The text follows decades of Palestinian documentation and reports by groups including Human Rights Watch. Amnesty notes that successive governments in 1948 have created laws and practices that oppress and dominate Palestinians. The report identifies four main strategies used by Israel. The first is fragmentation into domains of control. After the ethnic cleansing during the Nakba, Israeli policies have segregated and confined Palestinians to enclaves. Here, they are subjected to different legal and administrative regimes from the rest of Israel. These practices have helped maximize control over land and maintain a Jewish demographic majority. The report says that Israel has also enforced massive and cruel land seizures to dispossess Palestinians. Millions of Palestinian refugees remain displaced and isolated through Israel's denial of their right to return. Palestinian citizens in Israel are also denied rights to equal nationality and status. Restrictions have been placed on freedom of movement and rights to family unification in the occupied territories. Amnesty further notes the discrimination in resource allocation in favour of Jewish Israeli citizens and Israeli settlers. It also recognises the blockade on Gaza as a form of collective punishment. Amnesty notes that Israel maintains its apartheid system through forcible transfers, unlawful killings and other policies. While the report is an important step, Palestinians have argued for the necessity of analysing the context of settler colonialism as well. Rights groups in the Philippines are demanding an investigation into the killing of Pedro Codaste. The 72-year-old was a peace consultant of the NDF, the National Democratic Front. The front is a political arm of the banned Communist Party of the Philippines. On the 21st of January, an armed forces infantry battalion stated that Kodaste had been killed in an encounter. This was allegedly during clashes between the CPP's New People's Army and the 16th Infantry Battalion in Bukidnon. However, the CPP has asserted that no such incident took place in the area on that day. Citing reports from the local New People's Army unit, it has suggested that Kodaste was abducted on January 19th. He might have been summarily executed between then and January 25th. His companion, identified as Ka Globe or Sanro, is recovering from injuries. Rights group Karapatan has also disputed the military's claims of a gunfight by pointing to Kodaste's age and the fact that he was ill. It has called for an investigation by the Commission on Human Rights. Karapatan has stated that the Philippines government must adhere to peace agreements reached with the NDF. President Rodrigo Duterte unilaterally withdrew from the peace talks with the CPP in 2017. Since then, NDF peace consultants have been targets of red-tagging, arrests and even killings. 
And our final story is from Peru, which has witnessed a second cabinet reshuffle in just six months. President Pedro Castillo swore in 10 new ministers on the 1st of Feb. The changes were triggered by the resignation of Prime Minister Mirtha Vasquez on the 31st of January. She was sworn in in October after right-wing pressures led to a cabinet reshuffle. She cited a lack of consensus with Castillo over the leadership of the Interior Ministry. Leadership of the ministry has been vacant since January 28 after the resignation of Avelino Guilin. He left his post after not receiving support from the president in a conflict with the police leadership. Vasquez had supported Guilin's reinstatement and opposed Castillo's choice for interior minister. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Pedro Frank and the Secretary General of the Presidency also recently resigned. The new cabinet will be headed by Congressman Hector Velar. He belongs to a new parliamentary bench with legislators from the centre and the left. Right-wing forces that control the Congress have intensified their attacks against the Castillo government. They have also declared that they will reject the vote of confidence on the new cabinet. That's all we have on today's episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more on these stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. And do give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms for updates on all the work we do. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.